I'm looking at um, this being our third opportunity to spend time together. And uh, I, I've come to find out that uh, you're, you're more than a lot of people have probably given you credit for. I spent this entire weekend. I started Friday morning um, looking at your work for three days straight, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I want to, I want to say, I know your work as well as you, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's just not, that would be a lie. And I'm, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at lying. So, um, I have become extremely comfortable with the information that you sent me, um, uh, your book and what, uh, the parts that you're able to send me, uh, true deceit, false love. I, I don't think I could come up with a better title than that. And when I first saw it, true deceit, false love, it almost summarizes what I've been hearing uh, mm -hmm. on my narc abuse TV uh, show, live streaming show, which is on Instagram. One story after another, I've been hearing individuals talk about how everything was false. Mm -hmm. But more than that, they were deceived. It's one thing for someone to lie, and it's another thing to deliberately, pathologically be a deceiver for the purpose of misleading someone and taking from them. And that's what I started to understand looking at just the, just the terminologies that you have in the book. Mm -hmm. But what has life been like for you, Marnie? Life after abuse. What has life been like for you so that others can get a sense of and recognize that there is hope after dealing with a deceiver? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, well, please know that there is hope after experiencing any kind of domestic trauma, um, whether it is your family of origin, whether it's a romantic partner, whether it's a work situation um, uh, where you've been gaslit and you've been smeared and, um, and someone you know, usually it's one person, one perpetrator that does set out in a very deceptive manner to, to lure you in and have you as their source of supply. Um, what I do need to say is you need to forgive yourself. Um, and and you, you, you have to cut yourself some slack because, you know, you are not, you're an empathetic, loving, honest, caring person. You meaning the, the empaths out there, the, the targeted people. And we don't operate in a malevolent way. We don't uh, even like to even believe that people are that are close to us would ever deceive us or hurt us or set out to, mm -hmm. to manipulate us. Um, and that's part of our journey that, you know, um, you can go years and years in a relationship, um, almost a lifetime even without realizing, you know, you, you are a victim, you are a target, you are the prey to this predator. So I'd like to just say, you know, understanding what you've gone through and, and uh, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together as part of the journey. And it's not a journey that you can do overnight. And, you know, and, you know, you still need to put your, you know, uh, best foot forward and you need to uh, carry on and make sense of things. And I found that, you know, educating yourself on different toxic individuals, the behaviors, the red flags, the signs, um, podcasts and radio shows like yours with Narc Abuse TV and so many others that have um, taken their pain and, and trans transformed it into their power to be able to speak their truth um, is very, very helpful for people. So I would just say, realize that it is a journey. There are many, many different stages and phases of the recovery process. And I think that it's probably a lifelong ongoing process because it, it, it you know, so even though I'd like to say that I'm a survivor of right. domestic violence, of narcissistic abuse, of parental alienation, yes, I'm a survivor, but 
I am in no way 100% healed. I'm on this journey just like everyone else is. And we can be at different levels in that journey. And mm-hmm. but I just want to share with your audience that, you know, please do not give up on yourself. And um, even though it might be a very lonely journey, as you, you know, many of us have experienced our friends and family, and of course, neighbors and oftentimes coworkers, you know, we, we lose the support system that is something we kind of took for granted for a number of years, but that almost, you know, that isolation, that shock almost provides the impetus that's needed to really reflect on your entire being and, and, you know, realize what you've been through, realize your own childhood traumas or core wounds that have made you into the perfect target for some of these abusers realize you know your role in that and and then you can move forward so you know it's it's a process and we'll get into that in our conversation um for me writing has been a big part of that process and and uh i know we'll talk about that as well but um, just realize that, you know, you, you're, you're not here listening to Paxton by accident, that that's probably very synchronistic that you have found this channel, that you are starting to search out different people that have been through things to help you make sense of what you are going through or what you've been through so that you can gather up the tools and and the confidence, regain your confidence and strength to to carry on and eventually live a beautiful life with peace and love and happiness and harmony. And and it's achievable, it's achievable. More people feel like it's not achievable because uh, of what they're going through. But you've laid out that if we understand that there are stages, we can see that it's achievable. We just have to go through certain stages, as you're saying, and that there is hope. But right. and uh, if you it's not the same for everybody. It's not the right. same if for everybody. If you compartmentalize and you break down, you know, okay. your healing, um, okay. that that can be very helpful. It's just like any project you take on. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's something like, you know, hey, I want to you know, clean out my basement or something. You don't just automatically do it in one fell swoop. You are like, okay, I'm going to take this corner and this area or this box. And you just take one, one situation at a time. So compartmentalizing is, is very helpful and breaking things down into steps um, and, and giving yourself you know, a little bit of a reward after each achievement that you've accomplished, you know, can help you move forward. But it's, it's definitely a process. It's a, and it's a long one. And I, I, I'm looking at, I'm again, spending time this weekend, uh, uh, 30, uh, 73 days, 72 hours morning. Oh uh, <laughs> really, I was gonna, I was gonna actually send you a message and go like, I'm doing a, I'm doing this new do di- <laughs> diet called three days morning. The Marnie morning. Marathon. The morning. Huh? <laughs> there, you go. there you go. That's not bad. It's not bad. You, you should right. have a shirt uh, that people get when they buy the book. It's just the Marnie <laughs> Marathon. All right. So uh, true deceit, false love actually helps put a better understanding to the language of recovery. Uh, it gives people an understanding. This is just my perspective and, and my opinion, my, my, my endorsement of the fact that by looking at the book and the terminologies that are there, the words that are there and understanding terminologies, it truly does offer an, an opportunity for somebody to unlock where they are, what uh-huh. they've been through. And it gives them a sense of, you know what, I can navigate the future right. since the abuser is gone, whether it's been financial abuse, as you highlighted, uh, adult parental, uh, adult child parental uh, alienation, uh, or whatever it may uh, come into play for the individual. Sure. The book actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to do this right now. For example, uh, notice it, it says here uh, in this uh, section of the book, uh, it is part of the disclaimer, the author's intent through these original acrostic poems is to build awareness and provide linguistic examples, definitions, descriptions, and or responses to understand and heal 
from the trauma of experience, and as you highlighted, domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, and parental alienation. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that through the poems that are part of the book and what your intent is, here it plainly says we're able to understand essentially how to heal. Right. But it's an individual journey. It's not like you just are telling everybody how to do this. Uh -huh. This applies based upon whoever we are. And right, one size doesn't fit all, but the book will fit. Uh, technically, from what I'm looking at it, just about every scenario that a person is going through and whatever stage that they're going through. Right. And it and any any gender too. And oh, any yeah. and any role that you're in, you know. Um you know, what, what your relationship is to, you know, your perpetrator. So, so yes, um, just reading these words, you know, actually this book is a series, this true deceit, false love. I I'm holding up the first hey. book, <laughs> which is available awesome. right now. Okay. Um, true deceit, false love. This one is 15,555 terms and phrases on narcissistic abuse, domestic violence, parental alienation. Um, and there are many different tenses of the, the, these different terms and phrases, but really just reading these, these terms and phrases alone can be healing. And it's, you know, um, I am so fortunate and honored to have the support of the endorsers for that book, which include Dr. Jennifer Harmon, who is a, researcher, a scientific researcher on family violence, as well as um, parental alienation. Um, I also have a major endorsement from Dr. Sam Beck Becknin. He yeah. also wrote the foreword to my book, where he explains, actually, he coined a lot of these terms himself, um, you know, as a self-proclaimed narcissist someone that is in academics and wants to research terminology and help people come to terms with understanding uh, these dynamics. I also was, this book was also endorsed by Lisa A. Romano, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and uh, Tracy Malone from Narcissist Abuse Support, as well as Tamara Gerstemeyer Sweeney, an advocate and uh, founder of Love Dominates, who uh, tries to keep families together with, with uh, uh, awareness of parental alienation. So this is the first book in the series. Books two and three that you were talking about have to do with acrostic poetry. And um, those books are finished. They're at the publisher. They will be coming out in January. Um, again, these, thank you, Paxton, for being such a supporter of this with your wonderful endorsement. Um, I also have the endorsement from um, the, a syndicated radio talk show host and life coach and author and speaker, Ashley Burgess. So she oh, is, yeah, yeah she's yeah. supporting um, my next two books, yeah. two and three. Um, as well as Trisha Barker, who is a near-death experiencer and an author um, who wrote Angels in the OR, but she also is a narcissistic abuse survivor Good. and writes about that as well, in addition to teaching English at the college level. Oh, wow. So she is supporting me and um, also the UK's Anushka who yes. is, do you, do you know of her with balanced psychologies? So yes. I, I just her, heard- I know her quite well. Do you? <laughs> we, okay. We just, we just did a Zoom together. We, we okay. Talk, talk all often. right. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. She's pretty amazing. And you know, all of these, and so she thinks that I'm amazing and my work. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's, um, it's a large community as far as uh, victims and survivors. And it's a yeah. smaller community with, 
people that are taking their their situations and they're they're trying to turn um, the dark into light by providing awareness and resources for others. Um, so there are, and there are others that are have agreed to endorse the book. But what I what was very healing for me personally, and we all have our own ways of handling trauma, and you know how do we go about healing from this kind of thing. I found the words and terms very healing. So that was a project that, you know, really was many years in the making. Um, but I found acrostic poetry to be very, very healing. And acrostic poetry is basically where you write a term or a word vertically on your page. Right. And then you connect the first letter of each one of those letters to part of your sentence, you know, or definitions or phrases. So what I have done with book two of True Deceit, False Love, um, I have written 13 acrostic poems for each letter of the alphabet. Yeah. Okay. And it was a little hard when it came to Z and Q and that kind of thing. But by the way, I noticed, I noticed the Z's. I was going like, okay, she, she's pretty good. She's I'm pretty good. I would have been, I would have had writer's block. Like, I don't know what. Oh, it. I did. It was, a, it was a process, but you know, um, part of why I did this, um, I'm not necessarily sharing my own story with these poems. I've made them very general, very, uh, gender neutral. Sometimes it's a husband speaking, sometimes a wife, okay. sometimes a child, okay. sometimes a coworker, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes, a uh, you know, there's someone in the family dynamic. Um, so these are not necessarily my own personal poems getting my story out there. But, you know, of course, all of our experiences and listening to other people's experience influence, you know, the, the words and the messages. And in my case, the poems. So, so these acrostic poems in book two um, will like, for example, you might have one word that is gaslighting and you can have, um, some information about that. So it's not only our emotional reactions and, you know, try or, or experiences that are part of the poem. Sometimes I, right. I have information dumps in there where I'm explaining what certain terms mean for those that may not know exactly they've heard of that term, you know, especially in this recovery community, but they don't quite know what it is. And, and actually, even though this is a book of poetry, it's informational at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third book, so uh, like the second book, I believe is going to look very much like this, of course, okay. with a, a character and masks. And I believe it's going to be a green book. Um, okay with um, uh, alphabetical acrostic anthems is what I'm calling it. Okay. And then the third book, which is uh, a red book, that will be a survivor's workbook where Ooh. some, yeah, where I really felt wow. like, um, and because I had so many people say, hey, I want to learn how to do acrostic poetry and this might be really healing to put my story out in this kind of form. Um, so it is, it is a survivor's workbook where, of course, I put it in the alphabetical order, uh, but I provide one completed poem as an example. And of course, I give directions on how to do acrostic poetry and give the background a little bit about, you know, how acrostic poetry came to be. And then there are two suggested poems. And then there are blank pages for the survivors that want to, to create their own acrostic poems and make it almost make this book be their book. This is like their book. So I am so thrilled to have worked on and to offer this True Deceit, False Love book series because I feel in some way, even though it's a healing process for me, that I'm actually providing some tangible tools for mm -hmm. others that, right. you know, would like to try to think, you know, heal and think that maybe using words and writing might be helpful for them. Now you just called the acrostic. That was so wonderfully said by you, which you just did. 
Uh, you called it the acrostic anthem. You said three words there. Alphabetical acrostic Alphabetical. anthems. Okay, that is so cool. I'm sorry, you're going to have to make some t-shirts that say that. <laughs> you, need, you need to hashtag that, make some t-shirts or something, because I would buy one. I'm just telling you right now. I now, would love to wear I'll one on my one show. Just for you. I, would, I, don't I would wear that on my show <laughs> with your, would you like your website right underneath it or something oh like my that? Gosh. Just, wow. I would plug that. I would wear that without a doubt during the show and tell everybody to get one. I'd put it in my merch store just for you, just so people can oh go get one. Oh my gosh, you are um, super too kind. No, I'm just saying this is, we got the red, the green, and the blue. Right. That, and then the that's fourth gonna book work. will that's probably cool. be yellow. And there I'm not go. quite, it, it'll probably be some free verse poetry. Who knows? Okay. There might be yeah. a number of books that are part of this series. Yeah, that would you be. Know, but at the same time, you know, as a survivor yeah. and someone working through all of this, at some point, I may feel like, okay, I've, I've done what I, I can yeah. with this mm -hmm. series, and mm -hmm. maybe I need to move on to some other kinds of endeavors. You know, you luckily, go. because I live in the Caribbean, as we have yeah. talked, and yeah. Yeah. Um, because I'm retired, you know, yeah. I'm able to spend a lot of time just enjoying life and kind of practicing what I preach as far as okay. taking time to, to center yourself and ground yourself in meditation or explore nature and, and you know, uh, just enjoy the wonders of this beautiful world. And so I, you know, but so who knows where this will take me? Um, you know, I, I, sir, once I got started, you know, it, it, everything just kind of came to me. It was almost divine. It was almost, uh, you know, the intervention was, was of a higher source almost because it, it provided the drive and, and uh, the interest and luckily it's been well received, you know, and people are interested, they're finding some value in it, which is good. You, you have been uh, indeed well received on, on my page and from my viewers. Uh, I put a posting on and a few of them wrote me, they're like, well, who is this? When, when's she going to be on the show? When is I said, yeah. well, we have things we're working on and you'll see it uh, when I decide to release it. Uh, yeah. So you've been well received. I have to ask you um, about the word baiting and how you did the acrostic, uh, a part of your acrostic anthems, the word baiting is in there. And I love the way you did it. I just have to read it so people can at least hear okay. it. So they can build up an anticipation or without a doubt, this is from the second book, right? What I'm about this to This is the second book where okay. I have the poem yeah. out there. Yeah, now I have the poem. This is coming out in uh, January. Am I getting that right? January, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So everybody needs to uh, be mindful of that. Uh, but uh, here we go. Um, baiting. You, this is beautiful. Uh, start with the B. So the world is B-A-I-T-I-N-G for all of you who are listening to this uh, via either my podcast or uh, YouTube or whatever it may be. And you're just listening to it. Uh, uh, the word baiting. Each word has uh, it has a running a sentence with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Baiting you to slowly get you to react. A is for actively setting up the stage. I for intermittent reinforcement, uh, T for tactic to lead you on and lure you in. I is for in your mind, creating lust, controlling. N would be for now you have me, now you don't. They, G, they get you needing and wanting them. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you've taken the word baiting to set up for the reader, an opportunity to see what they're going through mm -hmm. from that one word. Right. You have, as it were, an anthem to live by, to recognize when they're being baited. Mm -hmm. And I love the way you did that. Oh, and, thank and, you. And at some point in the future, or whenever you give me a thumbs up, I can't wait to post this on my page, yeah. on my page when you give oh, me a thumbs up. you can post it. That's fine. Because that is so good. It's like uh, I've learned so much just from that one word. Well, you know, there are there are many people that don't realize they are being baited. Yes. And actually baiting could have many different connotations. Okay. Um, so you could be baited to set you up to have a reaction. Um, and this happens a lot in abusive situations, especially if you're involved in any kind of, of legal battle which, okay. um, you know, that. Okay, I most, get you. Of, most of us have, you know, one mm -hmm. 
one particular personal experience I had, which um, really was right before the alienation of my adult child, you know, who was 20 years old at the time. Um, but the abuser put out some, you know, contacted me through the legal system, you know, through um, a petition or something like that with right. false information in there, you know, right. blatantly false information. Right. And, and that was part of, um, that's a, that was sort of a bait. When you think of what bait is, lots of times you think of fishing. Okay. You're putting bait on a, on a hook and then the fish comes and eats from right. that thinking it's really a fish, but really it's a hook and then they're gone. You know, and so the abuser, like in my case, put out some just false information and your first reaction, a first very natural reaction is to defend yourself and yeah. say, wait a minute, that's not true. That's true. Yeah. I, I never said that. That's not what's going on here. You know, and that's your first reaction, but that's purposely set up that way because to, the abuser to get that reaction is set up yes, to, they to, want to make a person to want to yeah. defend themselves. Okay. They want they want chaos, the abusers. Oh, they yeah. want your interaction. They want to suck you into their, you know, drama. They want to keep the abuse going as long as they possibly can. And so in this particular case, um, you know, it, this, I believe, was also copied to this adult child. So I wanted to make sure that this adult child knew this isn't what happened. So I fell for the bait. Oh. And so I fell for it by defending myself and providing documentation. Look, you can see this isn't true sure. when I was set up big time. And because of that set up, you know, I gave the abuser the reaction that they wanted. Mm -hmm. And, and as a result, that played a role. I'm sure it did. It played a role in solidifying the parental alienation that really, you know, anyone that knows anything about parental alienation, that's in the works for years and years and years before you get discarded or you discard your abuser. You know, so, so it's, it's this actually, is playing. This is playing behind the scenes. It's, it's kind of behind the scenes for before it ever actually yeah. comes to full bloom. And yeah. actually, it's after the fact. You can see. Wow, now I see Got that it. the abuser had, um, you know, said outright lies to the neighbors yeah. or the friends or mm -hmm. or believable half truths. That's a big one. That they take something that you know could make a partial, lot of sense, yeah. partial truths, but it's not the real story, the real situation. But, you know, unsuspecting people believe it. Um, yeah. And, you know, you find out later on, you don't really need those people in your life. If they are, if they were really true friends, they would at least question and say, did that really happen? Or is this really true? But you know what, when no one does question those and, and then they cut off all communication with you and you know that they're aligned with the abuser, you know, you just have to, to cut those ties and, and let that toxic situation go that they are not they're not even worthy of of your responses um and that's really hard like i'm i you know i did okay for some reason realizing that i'm on my own here with you know my support system's gone i don't have like a friend, even at one point, I realized I can't even talk to a best friend that because of that, some that wasn't that wasn't available to you either, huh? No, not at all. Well, it was at least in the beginning. But then as time goes on, you realize that some of these people don't have your back and don't have oh, your best intentions. Right. And like I was mentioning, like even a best friend realizing right. after many, many years and after um, going through some years of uh, recovering from, from the abuse that I, you know, and the trauma that I was dealing with, I realized that that person was actually a big part of of the abuse the alienation and the trauma. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's such a process, but you know, when you, when you are, you've kind of feel alone and, and there are people I've talked with and, and I've read other posts of people mm -hmm. that, 
that's one of the hardest things for them that they are used to having yeah. neighborhood parties and yeah. having a group of friends and all this. And, yeah. and then they're left with nothing. Yeah. And some people don't know how to handle that. For some reason, I was able to handle that, yeah. that isolation and that aloneness, um, you know, but it is a very challenging thing because most of us are social creatures and yeah, we, right. you know, like to ha have our relationships, but we soon find out that there are some people that you trusted with your life, wow. that you thought they had your back forever, that they mm -hmm. are the closest of close friends and, but come to realize that they can be an extreme part of, of the smearing and the betrayal and, you know, they might even have, when you start learning about, you know, qualities and behaviors of narcissists that they might actually have some of those qualities too. And it's just like in the romantic relationship, you just kind of ignore those red flags. It's very easy to do that with long-term friendships as well, or even acquaintances. So it's, it's a journey. It's definitely a journey, but baiting Baiting can mean a lot of different things. That was my experience. And I know that this happens to numerous people where they fall for, you know, the abuser setting up a stage just so, to get you to react. And, and most people, you know, it's just human nature to want to defend yourself and to set the record straight and to put the truth out there and realize even in the court system, you want to do that, but you have to, and I didn't learn this, you know, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars later, I did not learn this. Um, in, the, in the moment, you learned it after the fact. I learned not it after in the, moment. the fact. Okay. Yeah, that that really, even in the legal situation, you have to realize that you may lose um, a battle here or there. You have to sometimes just let the lies go and let them be what they're going to wow. be. And and to, to have, you know, the end goal, to look at the okay. end goal. But yeah, I, I, you know, I had to learn the hard way, like most of us, you know. There, there, there are parts of your life that you know about that you had to go through that others who've never gone through it wouldn't understand. They wouldn't appreciate. Right. If you told them, if you wrote it out to them, if there was handwriting on the wall that came from the heavens, they still wouldn't understand it. Right, no. But you know what it is, and it is connecting with others when you have publications that you've put out here with your upcoming second and third book. Uh -huh. uh, and even with the book that you have there now in the first of the, of the, the series. But I'm just going to read a couple of things to you that I find fascinating uh, about the work that you've done. I take the letter F, for example, in uh, description of uh, your book, uh, things like fake apology, false flattery and flirting, false security, false self, fight or flight, final discard, fixed personality, flipping the script, flying monkeys, follow your dreams, forging documents, forgiving yourself and future faking uh looking at uh, about 13 yeah well there's 13 there. for every letter just in that in that yeah in, in yeah. 13 for every in uh, now there's a lot in that's a lot just in the f alone right and actually when people <laughs> are doing their their own workbook they yeah. might want to use a different f word oh <laughs> and create their own poem yeah, yeah. to express their thoughts about certain things if they want to or they might you know um they might use f for the beginning letter of someone's name that oh, okay. they have you know experienced some abuse with or something like that where so people can even though i provide those poems and then yeah. one of those is used in the workbook then and there's two other suggestions um, mm -hmm. which are different than the ones that are in my poems. So the two other suggestions are, are very different terminology. And then people can kind of create their own to as they see fit. But yeah, that's an example of, of you know, one letter of the alphabet and what are some of the terms that mm -hmm. make up the acrostic poetry. And, and in those poems, there's either information, 
There are definitions, examples, or experiences, or stories from, you know, a husband's point of view, or, you know, a wife's point of view, or even mm -hmm. a kid's point of view. So it's... Uh, I, I, like, I like that you call uh, intimate partner terrorism. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you got to, you got to make a, you have to make a merch line. That should be a well, coffee cup or a tumbler or, or I don't know, a, a sweatshirt. Intimate partner terrorism for decades. Your entire world is turned upside down is what you highlight. Uh, go ahead, please. You're going to. Well, I was going to say, actually, that term, intimate partner terrorism, is not one, and all of these terms are not terms that I coined, that mm -hmm. they are, they were created by countless other people. And I believe that Tamara Gerstmeyer Sweeney, oh, okay. who is a, an amazing advocate, who mm -hmm. has Love Dominates, I believe that she came up with that term. Um, she is continue continued to be alienated for the last 10 years from her four children. And wow. so she's got great experience, but it's, it's amazing. Like even she came up with some new terminology and actually new terminology, uh, you know, even since I've already sent my books to the publisher or ever since this one, you know, the first one with 15,000, 500, terminology comes 500 out, huh? it's, there's more terminology yeah, yeah. coming out yeah. that I, but I, I'm taking a break from that and not writing them all down. Cause I don't think I'm going to have another volume like that. But the, the, the bottom line is that, that terminology and verbiage to express what we survivors, you know, victims, you know, um, are going through, it's being developed on a daily basis to help explain and come to terms with what we're going through. Because language, you know, our abusers use it, they use language to hurt us, whether it's through a legal document or whether it's what they don't say, what they omit, or what they do say. But language also has the power to heal us. And, uh, and so, I appreciate I appreciate that you actually have that here, which you just highlighted the the power of language and how you utilize it uh, to drive home the point that uh, the abuser, the alienator, the predator, uh, mm -hmm. can cannot continue to have control if we become empowered through through our language, uh, through uh, through your your publications. I just there's so much that I'm looking at here. I just want to let me share a few things. And then I want to bounce them off of you. And then you have at it. You just go ahead and, and talk about it. You mentioned after the initial shock of realizing that you ignored years of glaring red flags as you were significantly betrayed. This is, I'm reading it from your, uh, your book here, the upcoming book. As you were significantly betrayed and deceitfully manipulated, you muster up the courage to escape in the hopes that you reclaim your life before it's too late. Now, this is in your upcoming publication. Well, it's actually but, but in this book Is it as in well. this one, too? Yeah. I was going to answer. Okay. Yeah. It's in but both. It, but it's in that first, the one you, can you hold it up for us again, please? Sure, I just sure. uh, make sure. It's okay. under the heartfelt so, note from the author. There's yes. a, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in so, all, all three books. That book is the one, though, that started this whole trilogy of yes. books. Yeah. So I'm just saying to anyone that, that is listening to the sound of Marnie's voice, please make sure you get the first volume now. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you do so now. Because even though this information that you have right here I'm reading is also repeated, what you're saying and the information you're giving is something that needs to be repeated mm -hmm. in the journey, whatever stage you're in. Definitely, definitely. You're, you're, if, if you don't have any of the books, I mean, it would be, it would not be beneficial to just get volume number two and three. You right. don't get one. You need to get the entire series because what you're talking about here is understanding the red flags, the betrayal, the deceit that can easily be overlooked is mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah. It says you acknowledge that there are huge repercussions to leaving your abuser. Life as you knew it will never be the same. That's what you've been highlighting to everybody. But then you say this, your mind races as you now have to consider basic safety and survival needs, food, shelter, money, transportation, employment. 
you say all of those things need to also kick in instead of more about, well, give, ignoring the red flags and giving the abuser the benefit of the doubt. But in actuality, all of these five things are at jeopardy because the abuser wants to isolate because that's what you said at the beginning. He wants to cut you off from friends and family. So a person doesn't have to feel like there's no way out. They can get your book. They can stay on top of it by getting the second one and the third one, because you, you say this, other vi victims take time to carefully get their affairs and assets in order so that they have a better chance at a comfortable exit. That's not something a lot of victims of abuse even mm -hmm. think about. No, most of us- Because they're afraid of the uh, abuser. Yeah. Most of us, like and with the next sentence in that, that you know- um, I can read it. Pair, read, read. Pair, well, the next sentence basically says that most of us just follow our gut instincts yep. and get the heck out. <laughs> yeah. And um, so if you, for any of your listeners that yep. are in the early stages of okay. realizing that they're in an, a situation like this, I would recommend picking up Tracy A. Malone's yep. book, called divorcing your narcissist you can't make this stuff yeah. up yeah. and i would i would recommend getting that if you're in the early stages because she gives me gives people the advice that all of us wish we had when yeah. we decided to it's great book it's a great, it's a great book yeah yeah. So, so, and I don't know if it's out yet, but if it's not, it's coming out very, very shortly. Yeah. So she is someone to check out. Uh, plus I she also- I think it's coming out shortly. At, yeah. At the, at the time we're, we're recording this, we're in right. uh, the month of De November. It is November 1st. Right. It's November. It, it should be out, I think before December 1st, if I, I can't remember. It should be, but it'll be, it'll it be, be out soon. soon. But even if you have to wait, it will be worth the wait yeah. Yeah. and don't make any big decisions until you take a look at that. Plus some um, Tracy also has classes and workshops and other writings and, um, uh, podcasts and things to, yeah. to help you navigate, you know, your escape. So, but most of us, most of us aren't even aware. We might even, you know, escape the situation without realizing we've been in a narcissistically abusive situation until we start investigating yeah. what in the world happened yeah. to us. I guess, that is, I guess that is possible, huh? I guess you could end up leaving yeah. the relationship going like, well, that just didn't work out. Right. But in right. actuality, a person could be in an abusive situation thinking that this is love and that this just happens this way with everybody, but it's not. 27 years <laughs> married. 27. So, mm -hmm. years. Um, 50 so. plus years wow. with a best friend. Yeah, you can, you know, but that's where you need to to forgive yourself. Be and because because there on. were, as you said there, there were red flags, there were different things that were happening. Sure. But because you're kind hearted and an empath, a generous person, you're essentially being taken advantage of by someone who keeps doing stuff and keeps taking your generosity and not appreciating it. And at the same time, you might be busy raising your family, working well, yeah. full time, working. Yep. Yep. you know, yeah. um, actually in, in many ways with many abusers, the, the targeted victim ends up sort of being in charge of, of everything home and family while they slowly, you know, um, gaslight you to believe that, you know, um, that, well, you're not that good at this. You need to get better at this. And then they're slowly moving further and further away from the, the family unit or, or whatever it is, you know, all those late night at work and, and that things like that. But, you know, yeah, this can go on for a long time and you're, you're not really aware. Um, and, you know, but you, you do have to realize that, you know, you don't think like a criminal, you're not, you're not thinking like a bad guy, you know? And so it's, that's a very good point. Yeah, because if we're yeah. not thinking like they are, yeah, we're just taking care of our responsibilities, as you said, raising a family, right. we're going to work, or, you know, grocery shopping, we have, you know, bills to take care of, we're, we're doing the normal features of life, not recognizing that someone else has a separate agenda. And that's to bring us destruction or bring us down or toy uh, with our emotions and, and our success. Um, or they want yeah. us dead. Or, or they want us well, dead. You're, and you're absolutely correct. Yes. Yeah. So literally. there's, you know, and even if 
if they were successful in killing you, having someone else kill you, or having your health and emotional state be so compromised yes, that yeah. somehow, you know, your body just says can't do this anymore. Yeah, right, right. Um, they will continue their campaign of denigration and smearing mm -hmm. and all that till the day they die. So you are still an obsession of the abuser, even if you are long gone. Wow. You know, I know of someone who, you know, just turned 90 years old and is still keeping the narrative going, you know, wow. trying to keep the, the, the poor me, I'm the victim and smear the other person. going when really, wow. you know, they were the perpetrator. They were, the yeah. Time. Yeah. It's like it's like uh again I have to go back to your your words here beautiful writing that you have here. Uh it says in the beginning of the relationship they state they like and care about all the same things that you do. You are put on a pedestal as the love bombing and future faking sucks you into the illusion that you have finally met your soulmate. You pinch yourself because the relationship seems too good to be true. You may believe your life is now like a fairy tale as you eventually settle comfortably into living the coveted American dream. And then you turn right around and you highlight this. Over time, however, you begin to feel confused and experience bouts of cognitive dissonance. As the abuser acts one way around others, flaunting their created public persona, to maintain their false image and another way with you behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You remember going through that, no doubt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if yeah. somebody has never ex experienced that and they stumble across our conversation now or mm -hmm. a series of conversations and go like, well, what are they talking about? Could you please, as briefly as you can, or whichever way you can, try to explain to someone right now what that is like to live with someone who is just Johnny go luckily lucky in front of everybody else, mm -hmm. but a nightmare uh, to live with. Well, you know, I, I think that every situation is different. So it's very hard to just generalize, you know, a personality type, but so many of these abusers follow like a similar playbook. You know, so one person can express their experiences and it really can mirror that of mm -hmm. countless other people that can say, wow, that's exactly what happened to me. But, you know, in the beginning, there's like a love bombing phase. And this can be with friendships, romantic partners. Okay. Um, it can even be in your family dynamics where, you know, they seem to like everything you like and, you know, you, they, yeah. you just seem to connect with them, what you believe on a soul level even. Um, but it's very, very calculated. A lot of these um, abusers, you know, have the traits of narcissistic personality disorder, which, you know, could be a whole nother show in itself. These people, I would say very few of them ever go into counseling or, uh, you know, any kind of psychological, psychiatric work, you know, um, voluntarily. And if they, and if they do, sometimes they're using that to, to gain the support of the therapist or whatever, just to kind of brainwash them into believing that they are a certain way. Um, which happens all the time. And there's numerous mm -hmm. counselors and therapists that really are um, completely fooled by these wow. people. And then they, unfortunately, you know, um, their therapy, their responses, their suggestions are based on a, a false reality of what's really happening. And of course, anyone who's been through the court system knows that the, the majority of lawyers and and judges, even if they might know about this, they, they don't act on it or seem to even care much about it. You know, lots of times it's the abusers that, that win in court because they are calm, cool, and collected. While you're the one, the targeted person, you're a little bit frazzled and can come up, come across, uh, you know. To, trying to defend yourself, being defensive right. and coming across like you're the troublemaker all of a sudden. And all you're trying to do is you just speak the truth. Speak Tell the, the truth, truth and, 
yeah. set the record straight. But that, and that's part of the whole baiting thing and everything. But so these abusers will will um, come across a certain way, and and lots of times these people are not all the time, but lots of times they are heads of companies, they are CEOs, they're leaders in their an church, authority figure, an authority, authority figure. figure of some oh. sort, right? And yeah. they oftentimes have a large group of um, workers that are below them. And, and when I mean below them, they really do believe they're superior to most everyone, you know, even, even laws and, and society's rules don't apply to some of these people. They think they're pretty much above that as well. Um, so, so they will come across, they're very skilled. These people, what they do, they're, they're like empty shells. A lot of them have been, you know, if, traumatize themselves with their own childhood core wounds or their own uh, abandonment issues and neglect. I mean, there are some reasons why some of these people kind of grow up to be abusers, you know, because they, they are suffering in their own way. Um, and, and that's, that's helped me in a way, realizing that has helped me with the forgiveness process of it all, you know, um, mm -hmm. to understand that, you know, yeah, they made choices and they're malevolent and they are really deceiving, but they also are acting out of just their own traumas. And unfortunately, you know, you were snowed and here you are in the mix and, you know, you were caught up in their, their web of deceit, their web of lies. Um, but these people, these abusers, spend a great deal of time observing their targets. Mm -hmm. They watch you and then they ask you questions, which you might think, wow, they're really interested in me. They're asking me all these questions when in reality, they're gaining intel. They're gaining information because they wanna know what makes you tick. They wanna know what hurts you. They wanna know what makes you happy. They, so, so they're, they're, these abusers are using their initial interactions, the love bombing, the mirroring, the future faking, they're using that because eventually they'll use all of these things against you. They, they're watching to see what troubles us, hurt us, what, what we perceive as a weakness or they can utilize as a weakness right? Uh, so they can get in to create havoc or chaos. Right. Is and that, they're very is that kind of what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, very much so. In fact, with my abuser at one point, um, you know, more than halfway through our marriage, this was, you know, much later on, I had a very challenging situation at at work with one very toxic individual. Um, and, and so it was just very challenging for me. And I was trying to navigate how do I how do I cope with this person who's doing so much underhanded, um, very abusive actions in a, in a work environment. And when I shared that with my abuser for support, I have never gotten so much more attention from that abuser than I did in processing how I navigate this because he was really trying to see, well, okay, this obviously was very, very upsetting to me. And, um, and of course it all eventually worked out, you know, and I eventually left that, that work environment to another environment, which was, was much better. Um, but during that time, you know, several months, my abuser, I spoke more with my abuser during that time than pretty much throughout our whole 27 year years. marriage. Yeah. Oh, so man. he was, he oh, was just so intent on learning. What was it wow. about this interaction that upsets me and how yeah. am I reacting and how am I navigating it and providing this fake support when really he, he was just really taking notes, taking notes. Now that, that this whole taking notes part is something that a person needs to consider a red flag, then they need to pay attention to that yeah. is, is what I'm trying to highlight. Um, because if not, they're just thinking, well, this person is really interested in me. Right. And it's not what we're thinking. They're looking and taking note to cause damage later on. 
later on down or the road. play games yeah right down the road down right. the road yeah they're gathering intel and and you know it's hard to know these red flags that's why so mm. many of us ignore these red flags but right. like i would say definitely one thing i have learned to do even in my future and present relationships right now right. is right. just to follow my gut feeling and so if something just seems a little off, I need to honor that feeling and pursue it within my own thoughts and, and say, do I really want to have a relationship with this person? Or should my relationship be more superficial? Should I not open right. up my heart Got it. Got it. and, yeah. and yeah. you know. Yeah. So, and not, not ignore it then, because I, yeah, I like right. the way you said that, because to honor it, I love the the way right. you phrase that, right. because sometimes we can get in a situation where we're not honoring it. We're just mm -hmm. thinking, well, you know, I'm being a little too harsh here. They they did buy me this. Mm -hmm. They did, you know, they did get me dinner and they want to go again. They just accidentally yelled at me. Maybe they were just having right. a bad day. We keep knocking that notch down uh, as to their behavior, and we amp up more of our being generous and kind to cover it over, to the point that we may not be realistic. And right. We so made, we're making we excuses made, for these. We're bringing people. them closer. Yeah, there you go. Right. That's we're it. making excuses for this yeah. behavior yeah. Um, because we're reasonable, caring, good people. Yeah, right. like, to, like you said at the we, beginning. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to see the best in most yeah. people. But, you know, yeah. as, as I've come to realize our lives, especially those of us that have been through these kind of relationship challenges, um, within our families and, and within, you know, our close circles, you know, it's not about quantity of how many friends do you have and all of that. I think yeah, the, yeah. the older I get, it's my <laughs> circle is smaller and smaller. And oftentimes yep. my circle now is, is more with people that have experienced what I have experienced yeah. because yeah. they really understand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even then though, you have to be careful because there's oh, some yeah. people that, oh, yeah. that can lie and use oh, that yeah. or that they have gone through this and they might not have good intentions, no. yeah. but, but yeah, it's, it's, um, we, you know, your, your, when you start to let go of some people and situations in your life, because they no longer serve you, you realize they're toxic, you know, something just doesn't feel right. Something's off. Yeah. Something's you off. At, what's, what's good is it opens up room in your world for people with like-minded integrity. Yes. And, and finding those individuals who have like-minded integrity requires us to well kick out remove pick whatever words you want to insert in here but trust me i was going to say something else but i'm filtering myself <laughs> we have to move them to the curve so that we can make room for those who have like-minded integrity because and so we may have passed we may have right. passed them up uh or we we can't remove certain people toxic people totally but we're passing up individuals that if we're not careful, we're putting them in that category and they're actually the ones we need to have uh, close to us or at least a part of our safety net. Right, it's a, it's a, it's a, real, it's, it's a real challenge of discernment, okay. you know? And, and even after you feel like you've got it all figured out, <laughs> you can be blindsided yet again. Re reassess again. Reassess, reassess yeah, again. constantly keep reassessing yeah yeah you know i i was fortunate that i didn't choose a narcissistic abuser second time round so yeah. i was very very fortunate in that but many people you know it's common right it's yeah. very common yeah, it's very hard. common for uh you know a man or a woman yeah. or you know uh whatever their partnership yeah. situation uh -huh. is that they they choose someone who has some of those similar kind of qualities and then they find out they have been re-abused and they're just kicking themselves like how could i let that happen again after what i went mm -hmm. through so um it's very common for people to go through that again i was very fortunate that i that i didn't mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that I'm, you know, my situation was pretty exceptional and unique, you know, but a majority of people do have to learn this lesson more than once. Well, 
before we have to go, we're we've uh, we've spent a, a nice amount of time together here uh, in all three uh, settings of getting a chance to talk. But why do you think this is an opinion question? Sure. Why do you feel and think individuals end up choosing after leaving an abusive situation, end up walking right back into another one? Why, in your opinion, does it happen? My opinion is that you've already been damaged and traumatized okay. and mm -hmm. and whether it's it, you, you've just experienced, you know, um, a devastating situation. So you're already at a pretty low point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when someone else comes along, you can be blinded again to the kind of qualities of someone that you would like to spend more time with and be around so that you you're almost blinded, I believe, but because, but you, but you're starting it at such a much lower point. So it would be ideal if after you've experienced something to, to do the work, to do the inner work, um, to find out your own core wounds and, and what makes you uh, choose kind the kind of relationships and partnerships that, that, you know, you, you did and, try to come to some healing and growth and learning uh, before you open yourself up for, for another relationship, because then you, you won't be at that low point. You'll be at a higher point in and your being, awareness. And being at a higher point in awareness, then you're saying requires us, this, I'm going to choose me as an example, that will require that I am attending to whatever I thought I was getting from that other person that I need to look at myself and see yes. why is it that I need that other person? I can, I give that to myself. What is it that I need to do so that I'm at a higher level of awareness uh, of not just my outside world, but who I am awareness right. of who I am. Okay. Right. Yeah. Or, or be more mature. Uh, emotionally and so forth as to dealing with other people so that we're not relying on them to make us feel better. Uh, and that's a process. It's a journey. It's, it's not like an overnight thing. It's not a, at all. It's, it's, and it's very hard to look at yourself and, and, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that's part of, you know, okay. whether they call it shadow work or whatever yeah, right. it is, you mm -hmm. need to kind of look into, you know, what, what got you into your situations and, you know, um, what can you do to choose better next time for yourself, for yourself? Right. We're not trying to just make someone else happy yeah, yeah. and avoid feeling quote unquote, or being lonely, but, right. Uh, right. to spend some time by ourselves. Again, I'll go back to me, yeah. so spend some time by myself so that I can improve and work on myself instead of relying on someone else to try to make me feel better. Uh, right. Loneliness will be loneliness is going to be an emotion and experience that may not be comfortable for you, but it's it's yeah. very necessary. And mm -hmm. and actually, even the isolation mm -hmm. that happens as a result of of being a target for abuse, mm -hmm. uh, the isolation that happens and the and the loss of just your support system, you know, uh, even even your neighbors, you know, that you thought you were had a relationship with for 20 plus years, you know, they're, right. they're not necessarily who you think they are, but that isolation and that uh, kind of journey within um, is very, very necessary. So, so that can help lead towards self-actualization to, to understanding yourself and, and understanding dynamics. And, and you can start to pick out toxic situations and people from afar now good, and good, not good. even like engage, um, yeah. you know, keep, keep your, you know, protect yourself. I guess that's, that's, that would be a very good gauge to see progress that you're able to be aware of the situations or persons before you engage with them instead of always being in that situation and going like, right. Oh, and then uh, I need to, I need to exit. But yeah. I guess growth can be seen when, when we're able to be, self-aware, well aware enough to know that we're stepping into something. And, and, you know, for your viewers and listeners, there are so many resources out there. Just, I mean, your, your radio show is, is so unique um, compared to so many others, 
Well, but it's so very unique because you don't just do a rush 20 minute kind of no, conversation. No, no, no. You, you know, not only are your conversations with different people, whether it's authors, survivors, mm. um, you know, researchers, whoever you are talking with, you have such in-depth conversations where you really get to the heart and, mm. and meat of the, the, issues but you know here we're on our third interview so the conversations i've continue. learned a lot <laughs> yeah the, but i have too and the, but, the com- but the conversations continue but for your viewers and listeners you know definitely there's a, a period of research and investigation yeah. and knowledge and your mm-hmm. radio show podcast is part of it so are so many wonderful yeah. books yeah. um i'd like to think that i'm going to contribute in my you way are, without true a doubt. Deceit, false love even with my first book your first one yeah, um, yeah. which is god came god to my came, garage yeah. sale yeah. and that was a, that's a spiritual fiction endorsed by james redfield won the 2020 Best Books Award. That was my first writing endeavor. And even though you you might think, well, what would that have to do with surviving abuse? Well, actually, it's all very much interrelated, you Mm -hmm. know, to be able to start to investigate why do bad things happen to good people and what is Mm -hmm. happening, you know, in this world and and what is happening within my relationships. And sometimes when you have a traumatic life event like I did um, and it, and then had this garage sale where a lot of miracles happened, you know, and it was a very, very tough time. But at the same time, it was a an awakening where I could pay attention to signs and synchronicities. And so actually that spiritual fiction mm-hmm. is actually part of the whole journey. But I'm trying with the true deceit, false love, uh, you know, I, I did it for personal reasons, but as it turns out, because it's being so well received mm-hmm. by, by so many influencers in our narcissistic abuse, you know, domestic violence, parental mm-hmm. alienation, awareness community, um, I, I, I am hoping that it'll be helpful, a helpful tool, just one of many to help other people in their journey to to get free, to break free from these um, situations and come to terms with who you are a little bit more and and then branch out and and live a, a more fulfilling life. Yeah, I like that branch out part because yeah. because uh, that is not something promoted in an abusive relationship for the victim to branch out. Oh, they want be you themselves. Isolated. They want you isolated. So branching out may seem like a big thing now once the abuser is gone or you're stepping to life after abuse, but you're laying out to us, it is very essential that a person starts to branch out. I like what you said, do the research, Mm -hmm. reference material, look into things that can help you grow, uh, which is very important. And unfortunately, you know, this kind of abuse affects children as well. And it affects adult children and, and adult children may not realize they're in the throes of it. Think about it. It took us decades for us to have our light bulbs. That's come a on. very good point. No, it's, it's going to be hard for children, yeah. but you know, some abusers actually isolate siblings from each other so that they're, you know, um, uh, I think at the same time that, that my adult child I want to say estranged from me, but it really wasn't. It was parental alienation. So she, you know, what there was alienation, but, and they also cut off, you know, your complete side of your family. I mean, it's, it's so grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and people that they were close to their whole life, they get cut off at the same time, but abusers are very skilled at actually at that same time, cutting off the communication between siblings so that they can't compare notes. Some people believe that it's because the abusers have some very dark secrets that they might be hiding. Um, You know, you hate to believe that that could happen, but some people later on find out that their, you know, children were sexually abused and, and um, among other things. Mm -hmm. And, and so when their children are isolated and the children are trying to cope, whether it's through addictions or 
work or moving somewhere or almost adopting another family, getting in another relationship and just saying, hey, I'm done with this family. I'm going to go over yeah, here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a telltale sign too. And, and so, you know, um, if you know of, of any adult child whose parents are divorced and it was high conflict or there were issues, but if, if they say that they don't have a relationship with their sister or brother, or, you know, that type of thing, that should be a red flag for the adults and that know that person to realize, yeah. hey, there could be some divide and conquer going on with the abuser. So the abuser is not only abusing their former partner, they're abusing the children. I mean, parental alienation is child abuse, but yes. you know, the isolation, Correct. you know, these, these children and, and even adult children, mm -hmm. many of them don't have the awareness or capabilities to, to, really look objectively at what's happened to them. They just say, wow, well, my brother or sister stopped talking to me five years ago. I don't really know why when really it, that could be something orchestrated, you know, and there could be baiting as part of all that too. There's a number of the terminologies that, you yeah. know, I use in my book, you know, could be, could, could be used to explain some of the things that are happening. And the, the baiting is something we touched on it a little bit earlier out of uh, your upcoming book, but the baiting is something a person needs to be aware of. As you oh, said, you've yeah. experienced it and oh, well, yeah. didn't see it coming. Many no. of us no doubt have, but it is something we need to be self-aware. Uh, we need to have an awareness about that. Right. It can happen to us, especially when we least expect it. Expect it. And before we know, we're trying to defend ourselves right. and we're being right. baited into now our words in our defense that we're using for our defense will be flipped in, on us and now they're used to, to harm us even more. The big thing is, you know, like people say with big decisions, you know, count to 10 or sleep on it overnight before you make a decision. <laughs> you know, when, when you are baited and your first reaction is to defend and get the truth out because that's our natural reaction, I would caution you not to react and give it some time. I mean, if you can give it even a week. And so instead of reacting, you can have more control over how you respond or not respond. Like sometimes with abusive people, closure is not needed. Sometimes, you know, and we're usually people that want to have closure. We want to talk it out. We want to come to some sort of understanding or agreement, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes um, it's best to just walk away without <laughs> any kind of closure and, yeah. and realize that no closure is your closure. Yeah. And that, that may be hard for some to really yeah. comprehend or endure and go through, but it's, mm -hmm. it can truly be the best course. It's to yeah. literally just let it go yeah, and accept that where it is, where it actually will lie is the where it needs to be. Right. And it, it will not get better from there on out because mm -hmm. you're dealing with someone who doesn't want to make it better. They want the chaos. And you don't need to, you don't need to feed the monster. You don't, you don't need like to that. feed. You don't need to feed hey, into. That should be a shirt too. I'm telling you, that, you know, that, are, that should be volume number four or something or number five. Don't feed the monster because no, it can be easy to do that though. To yeah. lean in and think because you're trying to reconcile, and right, the reconciliation right. is like the last thing on their mind. No, they no. Sometimes, a, sometimes when your light bulb goes on, it's best to to. to, to walk away walk away well i like that and we're yeah. we're going to have to move away from our discussion here right now and hopefully in the future uh, as uh, i was touching on uh, before we got started we'll be able to do something again in the future uh and some other things i have some some ideas that popped in my head as we were talking but uh we'll, we'll talk another time thank of you course. so much for doing this marnie uh again marnie please tell everyone uh the series of books the 15,555, just give everyone the last bit of information about you before we go and end right. this uh, episode. Well, I, I'm not on social media because I wanted to spend more time writing. So um, all my events, books, um, speaking engagements, you know, whatever endeavor I'm in, um, I, that is on my website, which is the title of my book. Uh, my original book, my spiritual fiction, God came to my garage sale. 
So www.godcametomygaragesale.com. You can check out my website and um, uh, there you'll even be able to read the endorsements from so many of these amazing people that have found value in what I'm doing. Then this book is, is there, True Deceit, False Love, with all those terms and phrases is the first volume. Um, the green book um, for book two is the alphabetical acrostic anthems. And you will have many poems to gather information. Uh, it can actually validate your own experiences. And like I said, it's um, not gender specific and it's, it's not necessarily my story at all. It could be all of our stories. Right. It's a combination yeah. of all of them. And then the third book, um, which will be read um, is the survivor's workbook. And it's an acrostic poetry workbook. So it's just one way of trying to make sense of what you've all been through. So, mm -hmm. so you can um, check me out on, on my uh, website and, you know, just with different podcasts and interviews and other writings I'm involved, I, I offer suggestions to, to people on how they can get their voice out. Um, you know, N not everyone is comfortable in front of a camera. Um, some people are comfortable behind, you know, a computer um, mm -hmm. or, or writing things. Some people don't want to do that at all, that they need to have a, a more personal approach, mm -hmm. a more private approach to their own mm -hmm. healing. Um, some people express what they've gone through um, in artwork. Some mm -hmm. people pick up hobbies that they have always were interested in, but never really pursued. So they're, they're learning something new. You know, some people spend time in nature. Some people exercise. I'm not one of those people, but I'd like to be one of those people that find, you know, yeah. uh, some support in exercising and everything. I guess I do. I swim in the I, ocean. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, walking out on your, on your deck out there, walking out uh, there, wow. looking at the ocean. That's exercise right there. Yes, it is. Yes, that it exercise is. No, is the no. heart right there. So. Right. I, beautiful, I, I, beautiful I, out actually, there. I actually live in, in, uh, in the Caribbean, in the rainforest, on many acres, you know, just so yes, I do have a lot to explore. So I get natural exercise. So I'm there not, I, I'm in go. nature's gym. I'm there you go. Gym. There you go. That's it. Yeah. But anyway, though, that's where you can find me is on my website. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm involved in writing workshops to help people navigate how, okay, I want to do something like this. How do I go about doing that? You know, luckily today, so much information is at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can start there with me or with so many other people and, and other situations and just, just, you know, realize that you are a, a valuable, worthy person who deserves love, who deserves not to be abused. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate what you have gone through, but it could be part of your healing journey and the best is yet to come. So hang in there, hang in there. Absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed this immensely. Uh, but for now, we're going to say goodbye. And uh, I look forward to uh, to all of your publications and uh, hopefully writing workshops too. We'll be able to, to advertise that too in the future. Thank you, Marnie. Absolutely beautiful person inside and out. Oh, uh, truly so authentic, so authentic. And uh, whoever the abuser was, they were a dummy because you, you're you're a keeper. Thank you so they're much. They're not well. The abuse, being, you yeah, know, yeah, they'll, they'll, they're, all they're of our abusers yeah. are not not well, well at all. Not well yeah. at all. Thank you so, so much for everything. Sure. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank okay. you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.